I think the vast majority of the FBI stands behind us and our attempts to make sure that there's a civil, civil and uh, peaceful transition of power here whenever that comes between October and January 20th. Uh, it may come when least suspected. Uh, anyway, David, you wanted to talk about the BBC, 9-11, uh, Greg Dyke, the Dykes Ball, and how Jimmy Seville figures into that. And I want to ask you, before I turn it over to you, if you have any reason to believe that uh, any party other than Able Danger is why the Jimmy Seville uh, history is now being treated as a crime. David, over to you. Well, I think it's very exciting because the usual philosophy of piling on field, uh, apparently the Jimmy Seville case has been upgraded to a criminal investigation and the consensus within the law enforcement establishment or what, it, what is left of it after Cressida Dick has despoiled the Metropolitan Police is that the number of victims has climbed to about 200. And those victims include patients in the Broadmoor Prison Hospital. When she met him, I was sitting just outside. He came over and didn't speak to me. He just bent down and rammed his tongue down my throat. Um, and, and he had to ram it down my throat because I was a 13-year-old child and I'm obviously, I didn't expect it. Um, and after he'd done, he just got up and walked away. A spokesperson for the hospital today said they were shocked to hear the allegations and would be working to support the police. But the sinister claims don't stop there. Broadmoor High Security Hospital is one of the biggest psychiatric units in the country. It houses some of our most vulnerable, in some cases dangerous, patients. Jimmy Savile volunteered as a porter here for more than four decades. He's been accused of using that access to molest helpless patients. Now Sky News has learned he had his own set of keys. The Hospital Trust has confirmed to us that Jimmy Savile would have had them in his role as a volunteer here. They say it's also entirely possible he parked his caravan in the hospital grounds. With every day now, it seems new allegations are emerging that stretch back decades. In the last 24 hours alone, Lancashire Police says it's received two complaints against the TV presenter, one from the 1960s involving a 14-year-old girl, another from a 15-year-old girl in the 1980s. North Yorkshire Police has recorded a report of a young girl said to have been targeted in the 1980s. And Tayside Police has received a historic allegation about the Liverpool area. Six more police forces have already recorded claims and the Metropolitan Police are now coordinating 120 lines of inquiry. Jimmy Savile cannot face a criminal trial but his victims might still be able to consider civil action against his estate or an institution if it was found to be negligent. The lawyer for alleged victims at the Haute de la Garenne Children's Home in Jersey says there must be a full police investigation first. If we get to the situation where victims are saying I've suffered harm as a result of what Jimmy Savile did to me and the police have proved that it's, that it's happened, then it is an option for victims to say I want to be compensated for the pain, the suffering, the distress and quite often the ongoing psychological problems. What started with allegations of Jimmy Savile misusing his celebrity is taking on an ever darker, more disturbing tone. The man once fated for his charity work, now accused of using it as a cover for his abuse. More prison hospital, uh, underage, uh, where this disgusting human being uh, got in with a gold-plated key, presumably given to him at the time, and I think this was 1988, by Ken Clark, who was then the uh, minister, health minister. Uh, and my consensus is that this uh, man actually took some guests in with him to uh, rape and assault the young people particularly, that was what they were focused on, inside that prison and various other hospitals and places where children are in the care of otherwise uh, reputable fiduciaries. So my question, I think, to the group, the coffee room, the listeners, the FBI, the Metropolitan Police is, who were his handlers? Um, and I just for the show, I speculated on a few field, but um, is there any of the names that we mentioned uh, before the show of interest to you? Once it has come out, you defend the second domino. Uh, you've, you've, you accept that um, 
he was a pedophile and he was a mass pedophile all over the country and there was there was a cover up of it the second domino you don't want to fall so that's the next form of defense is that he was a procurer for the rich and famous now we'll see where that goes i was talking to a journalist today and pointing the same thing out that you know if it stops where it is now we learn more about the the cesspit uh, behind uh, the smiley faces and the, and 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 the uh, you know morality of the system but we need to go the next step forward because once we can um, uh, connect Savile's procurement to not not just soap stars that people are talking about and 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 other people in showbiz, yeah, we, that that needs to happen. Yes, if it's true, uh, I'm I'm sure I'm sure in many 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 cases it is. But what we need to do is to connect these. The, this through to the real people that are orchestrating it, to, to, to the royal family, to the top politicians. You know, I was told by many, many people, which is why I was confident to go, to go and name him when he was uh, alive for years afterwards, um, that, that, that Ted Heath was a Satanist, was a, um, a, a torturer of children and a mass killer of children. He loved to kill them. Um, and uh, I, w- I was told this by enough people in the 1990s, the late 1990s, mid 1990s, to go with it. And in, a, in this book, uh, the biggest secret, um, and nothing since has given me anything but, but confirmation of this. And to see him connected into the Jersey Children's Home, he was also connected by some researchers into Kinkora, the the boys' home in uh, in Belfast. That scandal uh, broke in uh, in the 1980s uh, time, and and. Uh, Mount Batten's always been also been connected to that by some researchers, which connects us into Savile again, who said that Mount Batten was the guy that introduced him to the royal family, and le- which led him to have a close uh, relationship with uh, Prince Philip, till they had a big row and they fell out apparently, uh, and also with Prince Charles, which is has been uh, even you know come out in the mainstream media the the christmas cards and all that stuff also don't forget i mean he may have been exaggerating but certainly it happened on some occasions that savile um uh, spent uh, christmas with um margaret thatcher and margaret Th- i'm not saying margaret thatcher knew the background but margaret thatcher's cabinet like the blair cabinet was awash with pedophiles um and and it, you see in so many ways when you when you're creating a uh, and th- th- there's another reason that I can explain in a second, if you like, of why this obsession with pedophilia is uh, as it is. But um, y- when you're um, bringing together different groups, like different political parties to push in the same direction, you need cement. You need cement to connect um, people in these different elements of the system to push in the same direction. And thus, you will have secret societies doing that. So people in the Labour Party, Conservative Party, uh, Liberal Democrats, some will be members of the same secret society. You have things like the Friends of Israel group uh, groups in each party, which is another cement. But two major, major cements on top of that are pedophilia and Satanism. And and. If you um, can get somebody um, into the ring, into the system, either as a a procurer or as a a partaker of of this nightmare, then those people are going to do what you say from then on. You get a prime minister who's been compromised in this way, and he will pass and press for whatever legislation you want, um, whether he's conservative or labor or anything. And there's enormous amount of blackmail going on, which is leading to politicians pressing for things that they wouldn't otherwise press for and pass and bring into law. Um, And uh, this side of it is uh, often connected to to pedophilia. I mean, it's a a well-known technique in the United States and and, and, uh, Britain with MI5, MI6, etc., that they will provide Think people like foreign diplomats and what have you with with children if that's their their you know desire mm-hmm. and then they will film it and once they filmed it they are no longer representing their country or whatever they're supposed to be representing they are representing whatever British intelligence says they're representing because they can destroy them overnight and and you know it's um, it's interesting when you when you watch people who in politics who um, have said they stand for this and stand for that and at one point possibly genuinely did but then suddenly they're going the opposite way well maybe they've changed their mind or maybe their mind's been changed for them 
um, society, uh, the institutions of law enforcement, of judiciary, of, 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 of media, of politics, of course, uh, royalties are much based on it. And therefore, they watch each other's backs. And when you're procuring children for the rich and famous and the powerful and all the rest of it, then your back is their back. Because if you go under and it comes out, they go under and it comes out. And one or two things happens to these procurers of children. Either they keep quiet and are, are, are you know, safe like Savile, hence he got to the age of 84, or you considered dangerous and not safe, in which case you're no longer with us. And Savile um, understood the game and he played the game to his own, his own benefit. And another question, maybe someone can answer it. Maybe there's a plausible answer. But I look at his um, Rolls Royce that went for about 160 grand. I look at his other cars, Bentleys and stuff. I look at apparently, according to the, the media anyway, he's at least eight homes. I look at the millions of, uh, of, of pounds in, 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 in cash uh, on top of all that in, in bank accounts that, that was in his will. And I look at a guy who, yes, would have earned quite well in the 60s and 70s as the disc jockey and Jim will fix it and personal appearances and advertising. Um, but then I look at a guy of 84 who's done none of that for decades and has no real obvious means of, of living that lifestyle, but still does. And, you know, all I can say is procuring uh, children for uh, rich and famous pedophiles is a very lucrative uh, business uh, because you, you, you obviously get well paid for it. Um, if you do it well, and, and he appears to have done from their point of view, and they also watch your back because your back is their back. And I found it interesting. It was a, 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 an interview with a guy in, um, I think it was the Daily Mail this week, a guy called um, Guy Marsden, who was uh, a nephew of Jimmy Savile. And um, he said that at the age of 13, he lived up in Leeds. He ran away from home with a few friends to London. And uh, he ended up, as they do, at, at Euston Station and was picked up by some sleazy guy, um, as they normally are, and taken to some what was described as a grubby flat. And he said around four days later, Uncle Jimmy Savile turns up, not because he knows his nephew's there, but he's come to see the sleazy guy. Yes. And and he said um, he's, he's 59 now, this guy, and, 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 and married with children and all the rest of it. But he said that... Um, when Jimmy Savile turned up, he thought, oh, no, I'm in for it now because he'd run away from home and didn't tell his parents where he was. But no, he said, Jimmy just took us to a better place. And it, he told the story of how um, he and these, his friends were uh, uh, taken to uh, uh, the, the um, very palatial uh, apartment of a uh, or a house of a so-called um, famous pop impresario. And um, that... He witnessed pedophile parties at which um, uh, Savile would bring uh, children. Sometimes he would bring along, he said, someone who was dressed like a priest, which gave the, uh, the, the feeling that these kids were coming from children's homes, exactly where they were coming from. And so back in the 60s, it was going on, and he's done it ever since.